The Light of Jesus Family presents The Seven Last Words Welcome friends to our Good Friday special. I'm your host, Lloyd Samartif. Join us as we reflect and solemnly contemplate on the seven last words and experience God's gracious and generous love through the Passion of Christ. As we listen to the stories and reflections that will be shared today, we pray that God allows us to see our own sufferings and triumphs through His eyes and reunite with Him. To start, let me introduce Brother Aru Gogda, the Feast Mega Manila Regional Dilt. The Seven Last Words of Jesus Why seven? Why not three? Why not four? Why not Five, six words of Jesus. Why seven? Anong tinuturo nito? Simply lang. Seven means it's a lot. Ang daming gustong sabihin ng Diyos sa atin. Ang dami. Mamamatay na lang. Ang dami pang gustong sabihin. Bakit? Because Jesus wants to speak. He wants to speak to you. So my encouragement to you, my dear friend, listen to Him. More than you're going to listen to the reflections, more than listening to the sharings, more than listening to the songs, listen to Jesus. He will speak to you. He wants to tell you something. Listen to Him. And His words will lift you up. His words will set you free. His words will heal you. But He will speak. Listen to Him. The first word. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The Gospel from Luke 23, verse 33 to 34. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. Let's listen to our preacher for the first word. Father Joel Hasson. Mapatid, tayo ngayon ay nasa pagninilay muli natin ang pitong huling wika ng Panginoon. At ang unang wika na kanyang sinabi mula sa krus ay wika ng pagpapatawad. Ama, patawarin mo sila sapagat hindi nila alam ang kanilang ginagawa. Mga patid, kayo ba ay nakapag-plane trip na? Kayo ba ay nakapag-boat trip na? Kayo ba ay nakapag- what? Tricycle trip? Kung ikaw ay medyo uh, hindi ganun kalaki ang budget. No? Iba't ibang klase ng trip ang ating ginagawa. No? Road trip, boat trip. No? At lahat ng mga bagay na yan ay maganda. Lahat yan ay biyaya sa atin ng Diyos. Pero alam nyo kung mayroong isang trip na ayaw ng Diyos na mangyari sa atin, yun ay yung tinatawag nating guilt trip. At alam nyo marami sa atin nagigilt trip. At anong ibig sabihin ng guilt trip? Yung lagi nating ipinapaalala yung mga pagkakamali natin o kaya naman lagi nating ipinapaalala yung pagkakamali ng ibang mga tao. 
Sa ating unang salita, ang sabi ni Jesus, Ama, patawarin mo sila sapagat hindi nila alam ang kanilang ginagawa. If there is one thing that Jesus does not want us to have, it is the guilt trip. Kaya naman, ang unang-unang salita ang kanyang binitiwan ay mga salita ng papatawad. Because He does not want us to remain in our guilt. E di ba yan ang lagi nating ginagawa? Naalala ko, meron pagtatalo yung dalawang husband. Sabi niya, alam mo yung asawa ko, pag nag-aaway kami noon, naku, nag-hysterical yun. Sabi ng pangalawang lalaki, ay wala ka dun sa asawa ko. Pag nag-aaway kami noon, nag-hysterical yun. Bakit nag historical Kasi binabalik, inuungkat lahat ng kanyang mga kasalanan, lahat ng kanyang mga pagkakamali para mag na naman siya. Para magkaroon siya ng guilt trip. Di ba ginawa mo ito noon, noong 1945? E 2021 na, naaalala pa rin niya. Ang ayaw ng Diyos na mangyari sa atin ay magkaroon tayo ng guilt trip. Kaya salita ng papapatawad ang kanyang binitiwan. Mga kapatid, ano bang ginagawa natin usually sa ating mga guilt? Tatlong bagay. Ang tawag ko dito ay the three Bs. Una, we bury our guilt. Yung inilulubog natin yung ating guilt. Pero alam natin na anuman ang libing mo sa iyong guilt, hindi yan mawawala. Lilitaw at lilitaw pa rin. At paano natin binibury ang, at- ang ating guilt? How do we bury our guilt? Number one, we minimize it. Hmm, maliit na bagay lang naman yan. Ano ba naman yung kasalanan na yan? O kaya naman, we rationalize it. Lahat naman ng tao ginagawa yan. Lahat naman ng tao dun sa opisina ko, nag-uuwi ng mga office supplies. Ano ba naman yan? We rationalize. O kaya naman, we compromise. Ibig sabihin ng compromise, binababa natin yung ating standard. At paano nangyayari yan? Kinukumpara natin yung ating sarili sa ibang mga makasalanan. Eh si Hitler nga, ang daming pinatay. Hindi naman ako katulad ni Hitler. Alam mo kung ikukumpara mo ang sarili mo kay Hitler, santo ka. Pero kanino ba dapat natin ikinukumpara ang ating sarili? Hindi sa mga kriminal. Dapat ang Diyos ang ating basihan. So do not compromise, do not lower our standard. So yan yung ating ginagawa, we bury our guilt. By minimizing, compromising, or rationalizing. Pangalawa, we blame others. Ibinibintang natin sa iba. Una, ibinabaon natin. O kaya naman, ibinibintang naman natin. At di ba, ganyan lang nangyari sa banal ako sulatan. Nung magkasala si Adan, sinabi ng Diyos, anong ginawa mo? Anong ginawa ni Adan? Nanisi. He blamed the woman and he even blamed God. Ang sabi niya, yung babae po na ikaw ang nagdala dito, siya po ang nagtukso sa akin. Si Eva, anong ginawa? She blamed the serpent. Yung ahas po, siya po ang tumukso sa akin. E yung ahas, wala na siyang makita, wala na siyang ibang mablame. Ayun, patay yung ahas. So that is what we do, we blame others instead of accepting our guilt. Pangatlo, if we do not blame others, if we do not bury our guilt, we beat ourselves. Binubugbog natin yung ating sarili. Alam niyo po, naalala ko, mayroong isang babae nang umpisal sa akin, Father, patawarin niyo po ako, siguro mga 15 years na po akong hindi nakakapagkumunyon dahil po sa mga bigat kong kasalanan. Sabi ko, anong kasalanan mo? 15 years po ago po, ako po ay nakapagpalaglag ng aking anak. Sabi ko, naikumpisal mo na ba ito? Sabi, opo, Father, naikumpisal ko na po ito. Pero, naikumpisal na niya, pero hindi pa niya mapatawad yung kanyang sarili. At sabi niya, Father, 15 years na po akong hindi nakakapagkumpisal dahil ang pakirandam ko, ang dumi-dumi ko. At ang sabi ko, kapatid, nung ikinumpisal mo na yan, nakalimutan na ng Diyos yan. Kalimutan mo na rin. Nung ikinumpisal mo yan, pinatawad ka na ng Diyos, patawarin mo na rin ang iyong sarili. Pero minsan nangyayari, ganyan eh, we beat ourselves dahil tayo mismo ang hindi makapagpatawad sa ating sarili. So yan yung tatlong bagay na ginagawa natin, di ba? We bury our guilt, no? ibinabaon natin. We blame others, binibintang natin sa iba. O kaya naman, we beat ourselves, binubugbog natin yung ating sarili. Ano yung gustong gawin ni Jesus? Ano yung gusto ni Jesus na gawin natin sa ating mga guilt? para mawala itong tatlong B, tatlong A. Siyempre, kailangan A. 
mas mauuna ang A sa B. At ano yung tatlong A? Yung una, admit. Aminin. Kung ikaw ay nagkasala, aminin mo. Kaya nga, di ba, sa simula ng misa, yan yung una natin ginagawa. Inaamin ko sa makapangyarihan Diyos at sa inyo, mga kapatid. Aminin mo yung iyong pagkakamali. Doon sa Alcoholics Anonymous, meron silang tinatawag na 12-step recovery. Ano yung unang step? Admit. Acknowledge your sin. Kaya yung mga, nag, yung mga alcoholic, pag sila po ay nagme-meeting, ang unang ginagawa nila, kung halimbawa ako si Father Joel, sabihin ko, I am Joel, I am an alcoholic. So I need to admit my guilt so that I can be healed. Because admission is the first step to reconciliation and restoration. Bakit kailangan nating i-admit? Bakit nating kailangan kilalanin at pangalanan? Remember the principle, what you can name, you can tame. Kaya admit it so that you can be healed from our guilt and sinfulness. Pangalawa, ask forgiveness. Awa. So matapos nating awin, aminin, awa naman ang ating hihingin. Ask forgiveness. Yan ang sinabi ni Jesus, di ba? Nung tinuruan niya tayo ng dasal sa ama namin, sabi niya, forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. Jesus wants us to ask forgiveness. In the letter in, of James, chapter 5, ang sabi niya, confess your sins to one another. So what do we need to do for our, uh, with our guilt? Let us confess it and ask forgiveness. Ang sabi ni Jesus sa Ibanghelo, if you are offering your gift to the altar and you remember that you have a brother, your brother has something against you, stop there, bring down your offering, be reconciled and ask forgiveness from your brother, and then go back and give your offering. Ask forgiveness. Yung pangatlong A, ask for help. Ano naman yung ask for help? Ayuda. So matapos nating humingi ng awa, matapos nating aminin, ayuda naman ang ating hihingin. We ask for help. Why? Because if we rely on our own power, we cannot do it. But if we ask for the grace of God, then it will be less difficult to forgive. So mga patid, tatlong A, para mawala yung tatlong B. Ano nga po uli yung tatlong B? What do we do with our guilt? We bury it. We blame others. We beat ourselves. What does Jesus want us to do? Three A's. Admit our sin. Ask forgiveness. And then ask for His help. Jesus does not want us to go on a guilt trip. Kasi kapag tayo ay nagkakaroon ng guilt trip, we become unfree. But when we ask forgiveness, when we ask for the grace of God, then we become free. Sa unang salita ni Jesus, Ama, patawarin mo sila sapagat hindi nila nalalaman ang kanilang ginagawa. Jesus wants us to be free. Kaya sa araw na ito, at sa unang salita ni Jesus, hingin natin ang biyaya na tayong lahat ay maging tunay na malaya. God bless you po. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Jesus spoke this. Naalala ko tuloy. A couple of years back when I was a drug addict. Kasama ng pagiging drug addict ko is yung pagbago ng ugali ko. And my moral compass was really bad. Hindi <laughs> ko na... Well, right and wrong, it doesn't exist now during that time. And with this, I hurt a lot of people. I hurt my family, betrayed their trust, also with friends. And lahat na nakapalibot sa akin. I hurt them physically, emotionally. And nasaktan ko talaga lahat sila. And well, the Lord, uh, He has His plans and He gave me a chance uh, to set a new, to, uh, 
path of change renewal and yung start nung when I started sobrang hirap kung matanggal sa isip ko yung hindi ako kapatapatawat sa mata ng Diyos. I had that na hindi na ako kapatapatawat. And I found out the greatest truth. Oh, Jesus Christ set the perfect example para sa buhay natin. Buhay ko. Buhay natin. Forgiveness. And during the course ng renewal, I have I had questions like sino pa ba yung mga tao na hanapin ko na mahihingan ko pa ng tawad sa nagawa ko ng mga pagkakamali. O kahit ngayon hindi na ako adik, sino yung mga tao kailangan akong mabigyan ng kapatawaran? Because it's really hard. Forgiveness is hard. And I've learned some like how could forgiveness could free could free my heart of yung bigat na yon and to move forward. And this is what Jesus Christ did for us. Sinalba niya na yung mga kasalanan natin. By saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Yeah.
second word amen i say to you today you will be with me in paradise the gospel from luke 23 verse 39 to 43 now one of the criminals hanging there reviled jesus saying are you not the messiah save yourself and us the other however rebuking him said in reply have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you. Today, you will be with me in paradise. For the second word, let's listen to Father Bob McConaughey. Remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. There were two thieves that day, two criminals, and the one on the left was very, very guilty, but didn't feel that way. When he looked at Jesus, he wanted to mock him, just like everyone else that was standing around was saying, come down and we will believe. And the bad thief said to him, if you're really who you say you are, save yourself and save us. In other words, the bad thief wanted to be taken down from the cross. Dismas, whom they call the good thief, wanted to be taken up taken up into paradise. We have to remember something about Dismas, the good thief. He wasn't crucified for petty theft. He wasn't crucified maybe even for a robbery. More than likely he had committed many robberies with homicide, with murder involved, and finally he got caught. And on the cross, suffering as he was, he felt his guilt and realized he wasn't innocent. But somehow, in the depth of all of that guilt and everything that he had done, when he looked at Jesus and saw the crown of thorns, he saw the crown of a king. And then with humility, he said to him, remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus looked at him and said, this day you will be with me in paradise. You know, we believe every saint from St. Peter to St. John Paul II is in paradise, is in heaven. It's a matter of our faith and belief, but there's only one person that we know is in heaven by the words of Jesus. This day you will be with me in paradise. And so what did the good thief do? He felt his guilt. He repented. He saw something in Jesus that nobody else saw. Grace was already working within him. Remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And so it is with us. We feel our guilt. We want to change. We look at our past and we might feel very unworthy. And sometimes, as the Pope Francis said, we tire of asking for forgiveness. 
because we keep failing. And then Pope said very clearly to us, God never tires of forgiving us. I wanted you to think of your worst sin, that which if anybody else knew about it, they would look at you differently. You maybe judge you and say you're not the person we thought you were. In other words, your secret. It is said we are as sick as our secrets. You know what? Jesus knows everything about your secrets just as he knew about business. He knows your guilt. He knows your past. And he says, come home. I want to welcome you. It was St. Faustina that said, you know, that when we approach God's mercy, if our sins are as many as the sands on all of the peaches of the earth, they'll be instantly forgiven. And when you think of your worst sin, when you think of your guilt, Jesus is not repulsed away from you, just as he was not repulsed away from Gizmas for all the horrible things that he did. But rather, Jesus is attracted to us in the midst of our sin because he knows we can't save ourselves. He knows we cannot change ourselves. He knows that only happens when we say in the act of contrition, I firmly resolve. But we don't say by my willpower, by my wanting to, we say by the help of God's grace. I always assume every Holy Week when I speak about things like this or at the Feast of PICC, when I summon people to God's mercy and to God's forgiveness, I always know that there are at least six people that are listening to me that haven't been to confession in years. I know there are at least six people listening to me and you forgive, you committed a terrible sin and you're sorry for it, but you cannot forgive yourself because you think you should be punished. This was realized he was being punished, but at the same time, in God, justice and mercy meet. And he wanted to give him a great gift despite his past. Well, you know, this Good Friday, you can go to confession right where you are, especially if there's no priest available. And the Pope told us that we can go directly to God. If you haven't been to confession in 20 years or 20 minutes, simply say, bless me, Heavenly Father, for I have sinned. And then be specific about your sins, no matter how bad they are. And at the moment you confess those sins, specifically the Pope said, they are absolutely, completely forgiven and you're justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. Just as if I'd never done that. And then after you confess those sins and embrace God's mercy, Say a good act of contrition, neither one that you memorize, but make it come from the heart. It can be your own words. And then for your penance, maybe pray the chaplet of divine mercy, or a rosary, or some time in prayer for all of those now who are so frightened because the pandemic has gotten worse, that soon the vaccines may arrive and we will be well again. Dismas gives us great hope in the midst of our guilt. God does not want to punish us because Jesus took that punishment on the cross, but rather he would want us to recite in the words of the beautiful Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness, in your compassion, wipe out my offense. O thoroughly wash me from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Remember me, Lord, when you come in to your kingdom. I remember one night uh, sitting in, in my apartment, sitting in a chair after work, I felt certain level of loneliness na hindi ko talaga maintindihan. You see, I came from the province and work here in Manila right after graduation to send 
uh, money to my family. I also engage in in business on top of my job so that I could help more. But as months and years goes by, I dedicated all of my time and my attention to my job and to my business to the point that I'm so tired already, even weekends, even weekends, and I no longer go to church. So I, I don't I don't even pray a simple prayer, even prayer before meals. And eventually I I I feel empty inside. Slowly I committed petty sins. Then eventually this petty sins evolved and grew into big sins. And I know something needs to change. I just don't admit na ako ang kailangang magbago. And most importantly, I know I need to ask forgiveness from God and to the people that I hurt. So going back to the scenes, apartment, feeling lonely and feeling guilty, I, I just wanted to be happy at that time. So I pick up my laptop, I, I went to the Google, I went to Google and then I type the happiest place in Metro Manila. And boom! Yun pala, yun pala ang linya, ang tagline nila, the feast. Isa pa nun siya sa Valle Verde. So I, in, at that weekend, I invited myself, I went there for the first time and I have, I have to admit, I felt very awkward kasi may mass pala uh, because I, I, I never attended mass for many years already. Worst, nung nagtaas sila ng kamay kasi may worship, naku, gusto ko talagang umalis. Pero for some weird reason, hindi ako nakaalis. And as I listen to the talk, it's as if the speaker is talking to me. And But honestly, in my heart, I'm still full of, of guilt and doubt and, and feeling of unworthiness. Siguro napagod na ako, kakaas ng sorry kay Lord. Kasi paulit-ulit ko namang ginagawa yung kasalanan. And the most important conversion moment in my journey towards God is when I attended the Kirigma Conference. Kikon pa noon sa Ultra. And I was, at, at that time, I really, I'm really asking God in my heart, Totoo ka ba, Lord? Is your promises to me real? At that time, there's a portion in the program that the speaker laid hands over the sick people in the wheelchair and I'm seated very close with them and right before my eyes one by one they started to stand and praising God at that moment I fell into my knees and as if God is telling me in my heart son I am real I love you and I forgive you that time I felt God is inviting me to His paradise, to His presence in my life every day. Fast forward, I started to serve in the community, in the feast. Um, I, I started to arrange the chairs, welcome people at the door. Do it, kahit ano na lang, no, nag-volunteer ako. And now, I'm, I'm one of your servants in the community at, as feast builder. Friend, today, just like the, the, the thief beside Jesus in the cross, God is inviting you to go to Him. Go to Him. You may be tired of asking God for forgiveness, but God never tires of forgiving you. Yes, you may feel unworthy, but His grace is enough for you. Go to Jesus today. He is saying to you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. The smiles and the laughter, the shine and the glitter were all I ever needed in life. The sensor of attraction, the call to attention, I loved it all. 
From John 19, verse 25 to 27. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold 
your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Let's listen to our preacher for the third word, Father Jerry Orbos. One of the most painful moments, yung kung nakihinalo na ang isang tao, kinahabili na yan lahat, sinasabing sa mga may iwan, magmahalan kayo, basta nandiyan kayo, nandito pa rin ako. Siguro wala na tayong mas maisip pa na pagpapakita ng pagmamahal. Yung hanggang sa huli ay talagang iniisip mo pa rin ang kabutihan ng iyong mahal sa buhay. Like it to go back. Some of you, some of us have experienced yung paglipas ng isang mahal sa buhay. Isang magulang, isang kapatid. So, siguro po napakagandang alalaanin natin yung isa sa mga kahuli ang sinabi ng Panginoon sa atin na mayroon tayong ina. Parang hinabili niya tayo sa kanyang sariling ina. At sana po, ito'y ating let's hold on to that. We have anyone. And the Lord Jesus entrusted us to her and she entrusted us, her, to us. Mga kapatid, ito po sigurang kakisipan natin ngayon. At the end of our lives, sana po, pagkarap natin sa Panginoon, yung masabi natin, Panginoon, ang dami kong blessings sa buhay ko. Ngunit isa po sa mga napakalaking blessing sa buhay ko yung kung pinaubaya po niyo ako sa ating mga taina. Thank you for entrusting your mother to us. Thank you for being so thoughtful, Lord. Pati yung mga paghihirap namin, alam po niyo, in-anticipate na po niyo, and you knew that we needed someone like Mama Mary to be with us. Siguro po isa rin bagay na hingiin natin. Ang dami po kasi yung mga tao, they call even themselves Christians. They, they set aside Mount Mary. Yun. Well, wala pong respeto talaga. Because mahal ba nila si Jesus? We love you, Jesus, that's why we cannot love your mother. Huh? Can you go away? Think about it. Siya na mismo nagsabi, may nanay tayo. Madalas po, ay, may mga naging ipag-debate na oh, wala namang mamonary na yan, wala yan. Ay, napakasakit po. I feel so hurt. But, ikipag-debate, ayaw ko na po mag-ipag-debate. Ang isa lang pong sinasabi ko sa kanila, okay, sa paninimahalang walang mama Mary kasi mahal mo daw si Jesus. What if, what if pagdating mo sa langit, kapatid, nandun si mama Mary? How will you feel? You know? And, and I go on and say, never mind. This is what will happen. Ikaw, kahit hindi mo minahal, hindi mo nirespeto si Mama Mary, kung buhay ka pa, pagdating mo sa langit at nandun si Mama Mary na sasalubong sa iyo, you know, she will embrace you. She will welcome you. Ganun po ang pagmamahal ng isang ina. She'll be there. Her love is unconditional. 
Isa pong bagay na let us help me a lot in my life, in my priesthood, in my sickness, cancer, in my failures, in my difficulties in this journey. Si Mama Mary po ang laki ng tulong sa akin, personally. So mga kapatid, please today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. Jesus tells you, you have a mother. At sana po, let's leave behind our pride and selfishness and go to our Mama Mary again and say, Oh my Queen, my mother, I am your very own defender and protect me as your personal possession. You are my mother. I am your son. I am your child. I place myself under your special protection again, Mama Mary. I place my family, my loved ones, I place our country, the Philippines, our people. I place this whole world under your loving protection, Mother Mary. Lalong lalong na po ang pandemic na ito. Mga Mary, maraming salamat po. I will share with you a simple message from Mama Mary by way of a song. And this is her message for you and for me. The song I made years ago. si Brother Eng. Huwag niyong uulitin. <laughs> o diba? Masaya. Yan po ako. Masayahin. Yeah. Uh, masayahin na talaga. But when when I am now with God, right now, when God has found me, uh, I am happier. Yes. But before that, I was happy simply because I thought mabuti ako. Ibig sabihin, wala naman akong matinding kasalanan wala akong ginagawang masama, lalong-lalo na sa kapwa ko. I follow the golden rule to the letter how I understood it. Paano yon? Do not do unto others what you do not want others to do unto you. So, di ba? Para hindi ako gawin sa akin, hindi ko gagawin sa kanila, I follow that. But alam nyo, ang nangyari doon, anong tawag doon? I have that self-righteousness na pumipigil talaga sa akin na makipag magkaroon ng relasyon sa ating Panginoon. Why do I say that? Kasi kakilala ko siya, kilala ko yung kanyang mga alituntunin, alam ko rin yung kanyang mga batas, yung commandments, alam ko rin, and I really wanted to obey. But the problem is, yeah, I am just happy doing that, although with my, you know, <laughs> meron naman tayo talaga nun, eh, di ba, may mga 
tang tawag ko nun, petty sins. But these petty sins actually are separating me, were separating me from God. Sila yung naglalayo sa akin sa ating Panginoon. And even even to the point na when God has found me in Cebu, uh, lalo ngang in a sense, nung una, lalong nadagdagan ang self-righteousness ko. Why do I say that? Kasi nga po, uh, even even yung yung devotion ko sa ating mahal na ina ay wala pa naman po ako noon dati <laughs> di ba an uh, nung nung akala ko dati nga mas pwede pa ako mas maging magaling sa kanya bakit kasi nang sabi ni Lord eh, blessed are those who knows the will of God and obeys them di ba kasamantalang siya sabi blessed is the breast that nurse you ino honor si Mama Mary pero hindi ang sagot ni Lord ay ganon kaya sabi ko eh pwede pala akong maging mas better pa kay Mama Mary and I was rebuked actually uh, and, and corrected and I took that and I, I learned now the role of Mama Mary in the salvation history I put that in my heart okay and I cherish that and really giving her that role ano yun? to pray with me and pray for me. Yeah. Pag nagdadasal na ako sa ating Panginoon, natutuwa ako dahil nakakatiyak ako na nakakarating yung aking mga panalangin sa Kanya. Bakit? Because Mama Mary is praying for me and praying with me. Yeah. Ngayon, I, I hope I can tell you na okay na yung journey ko sa buhay. Di ba? Hindi po. Minsan lumulutang pa rin yung aking self-righteousness na mas, na mas ma, uh, mabuti yung buhay ko kaysa sa iba. Especially when I look at others na mas matitindi yung ginagawa kaysa sa akin. Ganong klase. Pero alam nyo, yung journey yan ay dahan-dahan naman ding nagiging maayos sa kabutihan na rin po ng ating Panginoon. At ikit sa lahat, with Mama Mary praying for me and praying with me. Yes, I am now enjoying the journey, my journey, towards God. And I hope you also will enjoy the journey with Mama Mary in you, praying for you and praying with you. God bless you! forsaken me the gospel from mark 15 verse 33 to 34 at noon darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon and at three o'clock jesus cried out in a loud voice eloi eloi lemma sabachthani which is translated my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For the fourth word, let's listen to Father Alex Balatbat. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? One of the original words of Jesus in Aramaic, Eloi, Eloi, Lema, Sabaktani. Bakit mo ako pinabayaan? Tila napakalalim ng pinaghuhugutan ni Jesus. Pinaghuhugutan mula sa kailalima ng napakalalim na sakit. Pagdurusa na para ba siyang nag-iisa. Kung saan ang langit ay tahimik, walang marinig. At ang isang napakasakit na tanong na binibigkas niya, panalangin nagtatanong mula sa Salmo 22. Tanong kung totoo nga bang kailanman ang Diyos, hindi niya tayo pababayaan. Nag-uugat ang tanong sa isang karanasang parang hindi umaakma doon sa katotohanang ikaw ama at ako ay iisa. That I am your beloved. That you will never forget me. 
For I am your beloved son. From the assurance of a beautiful covenant, I am your father. You are my son. Subalit doon sa katahimikang iyon, parang hindi totoo ang pangakong kanyang pinanghawakan. Where are you, my God? Why have you forsaken me? Sabayan natin ang tanong ni Jesus. Habang pinangahawakan natin ang katotohanang Diyos, kailanman hindi sisira sa kanyang pangako, Diyos na ang tanging gagawin, tayo'y mamahalin, aantabayanan, hindi iiwan, hindi bibitiwan. Hindi ba masama ang magtanong sa Kanya? Kung ang puso ay naguguluhan, kung ang puso ay nalalabuan sa mga pinagdadaanan ng ating karanasan. Hinanghina, walang lakas, walang direksyon, parang walang patutunguhan ang lahat. When times that we cannot move on, We feel so helpless. We feel so weak as if everything is pictured by hopelessness. May magagawa pa ba ang tao? Mayroon pa nga ba tayong Diyos na kinakapitan? Natatandaan ko po nung bata pa ako, sabi nung madring nag-alaga sa akin, Alex, ipagdasal natin ang kapayapaan ng mundo. Araw-araw nagdadasal ako, doon pa sa harap ng image ni Our Lady of Perpetual Health. That was already more than 40 years ago. Hanggang ngayon, Nagdadasal pa rin po ako sa kapayapaan ng mundo. Tila yata lalong gumugulo. Pinakikinggan ba ng Diyos ang aking panalangin? Natutulog ba ang Diyos? Where are you? Kailangan ko bang sumigaw muli? Sumigaw ng sumigaw hanggang sa ako'y iyong marinig. Mangungulit, hindi hihintong magtanong. O sasabay na rin ako sa tanong ni Jesus habang dinadasalang Salmo 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken us? Lalong-lalo na ngayong ang ating kapaligiran ay balot ng kahinaan takot at pangamba. Ang COVID-19 na hindi natin alam kung kailan matatapos ang pinagdadaanan, kung saan ang ating mga minamahal, mga taong niyakap natin at ginawang dahilan upang magpatuloy sa buhay, bigla na lamang nawawala, bigla na lamang naglalaho na para bang maging ang dahilan para magpatuloy sa buhay, nawawalan ng saysay. Dati po, sabi nila, ang suicide ratio ay 1 is to 1 million. Ngayon, 1 is to 1 thousand. Nakakapagod nga ba ang mabuhay ng nag-iisa kung saan ang bawat araw ang hinaharap ay hirap at dusa, balot ng malalim na pangamba at takot, 
na para bang ang Diyos, tayo'y nakalimutan, tayo'y napabayaan. Si Jesus, sumasabay sa ating mga tanong, bakit mo ako pinabayaan? Subalit kung titingnan natin ang Salmo 22, hindi natapos sa isang pagtatanong. Bagkos nanduroon pa rin ang katagunan ng Diyos Ama, hindi kita pababayaan, hindi kita iiwan. Pero kailan matatapos ang pagdurusa? Kailan magwawakas ang paghihirap? Buksa ng katotohanan. God did not come to remove suffering. He did not come even to explain why is there suffering. But God came to feel suffering with His presence. In moments of laughter and tears, Misery and joy, life and death, God is present. In our suffering, we are not alone. He is with us. Sabihin mo sa akin ang mga problema mo. Sabay tayong iiyak. Ngayong araw na ito ng Biyernes Santo, ginugunita natin ang pag-iyak ni Jesus, ang malalim na panaghoy. Hindi lamang ito tungkol sa kanyang pag-iyak, ito ay tungkol sa ating pag-iyak. Huwag kang hihinto kung kinakailangang umiyak. Learn how to weep. Learn how to cry. Because if you do not know how to weep, if you do not know how to cry, you can never be a good Christian. Pope Francis is saying us, umiiyak tayo bilang pakikiisa sa pag-iyak ng sangkatauhan sa lalim ng mga pagsubok na dinadaanan, sa lalim ng sugat na binabata. Umiiyak din tayo upang hugasan ang kasalanang ginawa ng pagkakamali ng nakaraan. May misteryo ang luha. Nang si Jesus pasuki ng ating luha, ang bawat patak ng luha mula sa ating mata ay tubig ng kabanalan. I cannot imagine, you know, questioning the mystery of creation. Kung papaano ipinasok ng Diyos ang misteryo ng luha sa bawat mata ng tao. And try to imagine every second in the whole world, gaano karaming luha ang pumapatak. Luhang naglilinis Luha ng pakikiisa. At hindi lang tayo ang umiyak, maging ang Diyos umiyak. Doon tayo nagkakasama, doon tayo nabibigyan ng pag-asa na kailanman ng Diyos. Hindi niya tayo pinabayaan, hindi niya tayo kinalimutan, bagkos niyakap niya, maging ang bawat pagdurusang ating pinagdadaanan. May sagrado sa nagaganap. Maging napakadilim ng ating buhay, may nagaganap. Holy darkness, blessed night. The question of Jesus, why have you forsaken me? Is a prayer coming from the rooted deep faith that God is always there for us. 
as Jesus is asking the question, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabaktani. Let us be with Him. He is with us. Let us join me in the sacredness of our pain. Let us have a question like what Jesus have asked in our own sincere prayer. Alam kong hindi mo kami bibitiwan. Alam kong narinig mo ang tanong, bakit mo ako pinabayaan? At ngayon ay aming naririnig, anak, hindi kita pinabayaan. Hindi kita iiwan. Hindi kita bibitiwan. Sapagkat ikaw ay anak ko. Ikaw ay mahal na mahal ko. Kailanman, hindi kita kalilimutan. Amen. February 9, 2015, alas 7.30 ng umaga. I was on my way to the office when I received the call. It was my father-in-law. He told me that my wife had an accident. From Cebu, I immediately booked a flight back to Laguna and upon arrival at Calamba Medical Center, nakita ko ang misis ko sa hospital bed na kahiga comatose. Her head was severely injured nang masagasaan po siya ng bus habang tumatawin. And after three days of intense prayer and pleading to God for a miracle, she gave in to her injuries and died. Gumuho ang mundo ko at sarisaring emosyon ang naramdaman ko. Grief, devastation, hopelessness, and many more. For many months and years, I was in extreme denial of what happened. It was the darkest moments of my life. I was so angry with God. I literally rebelled against Him. Lord, bakit mo ginawa ito? I asked Him why He allowed the tragedy to happen in my life, even though we are actively serving Him. I found it hard to find the reason to wake up and stand every morning. And when I manage to stand up, I want to hurriedly go back to sleep and end each and every day exhausted and empty. I took my sons to Bicol with my parents and went back to Laguna because I wanted to be alone. And thoughts of ending everything crossed my mind, but the welfare of my children outweighs these thoughts. I wanted so much to be in the dark, and I was in the dark. February 2017, I attended a Lab Life retreat, a retreat intended for single men and women, and there, at that retreat, I found love. God used that retreat to meet me para ligawan niya ako ulit para sabihin ko gaano niya ako kamahal gusto niya ako yakapin and I crushed my defenses and allowed him to embrace me I asked him to feel my shattered heart with his love and he asked me to surrender dati na itanong ko Diyos ko, Diyos ko, bakit mo ako pinabayaan? Sumagot siya, mahal na mahal kita anak, hindi ko yan gagawin kahit kailan. Sa mga panahon na ikaw ay may hapis, katabi mo akong naghihinagpis.
say goodbye Why I can barely say goodnight If I can hardly take my eyes from yours How far can I go Cross my mind I couldn't turn my back on spring or fall your smile least of all when I say always I mean for Today, I am not afraid to say I love you. And I promise you, I'll never say goodbye. Dancers on a crowded floor While other dancers live from song to song Our music goes on On and on And if I never leave your arms Travels everywhere for my world is there when I say always I mean forever I trust tomorrow. The Gospel from John 19, verse 28 to 29. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a field with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. Let's listen to our preacher for the fifth word, Father Mike LaGuardia. I thirst. Ako'y nauuhaw. This is the shortest of the seven last words of Jesus on the cross. Just two little words, but laden with deep meaning. Surprisingly, we find this fifth last word of Jesus only in the Gospel of John. 
In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, we get to read of one of the bystanders at the crucifixion scene, take a sponge, soak it in wine, put it on a reed and offer it to Jesus right after he cries out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Earlier on in the Gospel of Mark, we get to read of the soldiers who give Jesus wine drugged with myrrh, a kind of a narcotic which Jesus refuses to take. The Gospel of Luke is silent altogether about the thirst of Jesus or any drugged wine offered him. And so we take it from the testimony of the disciple whom Jesus loved. After all, he was the disciple who stood faithfully at the foot of the cross until the very end. We know and understand the context of the eye thirst of Jesus. His last food and drink intake was during the Last Supper. That was Holy Thursday night. And more or less 21 hours has passed since then. And just after what we can imagine as a violent arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, just after that grueling ascent and descent of 28 marble steps of what we traditionally would consider and call as the Scala Santa, the Holy Stairs, leading to the Praetorium of Pontius Pilate. Right after the excruciating scourging at the pillar and severe beating in the hands of the Roman soldiers who were professional executioners, right after the carrying of the heavy weight of the cross and the crucifixion, Jesus must have been so drained and exhausted, severely dehydrated, after all, he had lost a huge amount of blood. And so his eye thirst is simply expecting. But there's another deeper level of meaning of the thirst here. Just like a parent, an aging or sick one, who thirsts for a family reunion which is made impossible in the here and now because of the pandemic crisis, or a child thirsting for the presence of a parent who's working abroad as an OFW, or a husband or wife thirsting for the attention and affection of his or her spouse, or a person thirsting for the encouraging and comforting presence of his or her friends, we have here that kind of thirst that is more than just physical. In fact, we get to see another level of the meaning of thirst when we open the book of Psalms written by David. As David writes about his experience in the wilderness of Judah, as he flees and hides from Saul who was persecuting and pursuing him, from an experience of physical thirst, David sings of a spiritual one. Psalm 63 goes like this. O oh God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry weary land without water. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. I thirst is a human expression of our ardent longing for God. On the cross, I thirst becomes a divine expression of God's ardent longing for us. Jesus thirsts. He thirsts for me. He thirsts for you. No one goes thirsty at the border of a well or in the vicinity of a drinking water station. We go thirsty when we are deprived of water. Jesus thirsts for you and for me because we have deprived him of 
our love. Jesus thirsts for us because we have abandoned him. He thirsts for us because we have taken for granted the Sunday Holy Mass. Jesus thirsts for us because we have neglected prayer, which is our communication line with him. He thirsts for us because we have forgotten our relationship with him and our relationship with others. Jesus thirsts for us because we have turned our backs on the count of our daily concerns. He thirsts for us because we have walked away on the count of our disappointments and discouragements in life. Jesus thirsts for us because we have rejected him on the count of our sins. Jesus thirsts. And we can satisfy that thirst of our Lord as we strive to satisfy our own thirst for him. We need Jesus, the fountain of living water. He himself has extended to us the invitation. Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. Let us turn back to the Lord, realizing that without him, we can do nothing. Without him, we are nothing. Let us come back to him and thirst for him who thirsts for us. Hello, I am Joy Cancho, former biker dancers of the 80s and known as the founder, former manager of the Sex and Girls and the one who conceptualized and produced the longest teleserie in GMA7 titled Dei Shishete. During those days, all my dreams were fulfilled. I remember I always pray when I need something, especially when I ask him to make my plans or project to push through. But when I receive it or fulfill my dreams, I didn't remember that I thank God for granting my prayers. And if you see, it tries to fame. I have a lot of money. I have that power. Yet, not happy. Akala ko pag na-reach ko na yung dreams ko, okay na ako. Hindi pa pala. I'm longing. I'm thirsty for something. Hinanap ko sa akala ko ang makakapatid sa uhaw. Hanggang nakilala ko yung one-armed bandit machine sa casino. Grabbing unwise spending, indulgence to unhealthy lifestyle, paulit ulit. But you know, these temporary joys did not satisfy me. Everything was taken away, everything was lost. I hit rock bottom. That time, there was a day na I'm so tired, I'm longing for a long sleep. Kasi I felt useless eh. Sobrang confused. Ang gulo. Ang gulo-gulo ng isip ko. So what I did, I took one bottle of antihistamine yan. And then all of the sudden, natakot ako kasi parang may mabigat na dumagan dito na hindi ako makahinga. Na ako pa mismo ang nagsabi sa anak kung dali mo ako sa hospital, anak. And during that time, I remember, I keep saying, Lord, forgive me for what I have done. Lord, forgive me for what I have done. Hanggang nagising na lang ako sa ICU and I thought, baka mamatay ako, pero sinabi naman ng, ng doktor dun sa ICU na they are observing my internal organs. Grabe. Nangingi, sobrang nangingi ako ng sobrang patawad sa Panginoon. At that time, I'm so thankful to the Lord that he gave me another chance to live. And I told him, Lord, this time I will listen. Just lead my path. I was thirsty. 
Then I found the Lord through feast. That time my ate invited me to attend feast. Na ulit yun, hanggang lumilinaw yung sitwasyon ko, na nakikita ko bakit nangyari sa buhay ko ang ganong lungkot, ang ganong pagkauhaw, dahil lack of a knowing God. I received this word from the Bible, from John chapter 6, verse 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I realize only the Lord's love can quench my thirst. Pinatid niya ang uhaw ko sa pamamagitan ng kanyang pagmamahal. Sa pamamagitan ng pagdala niya sa akin sa peace. And I feel the acceptance. I felt the love ng mga taong sa mga feast. Sobra. At uh, natanggap ko rin yung isang salita sa kanya na from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek God first, His kingdom and righteousness, then everything will go well. Sobrang totoo. Sobrang faithful ni Lord. Sobrang I tried all my best to follow Him. Yet I also realized I need to quench Christ's thirst. To love Him back through my own family, my friends, and my community. Through sharing. Never stop sharing tong life testimony ko. I never stop doing this in my everyday life kasi alam ko makakabless ako sa mga taong depressed eh. sa mga taong nakaranas ng naranasan ko and so thankful so thankful sa mga taong tumulong sa akin na ginamit ng Panginoon and uh, talaga naman I'm faithfully serving Him through the ministry of dancing worship ministry in Alambang District. At uh, I never stopped doing my LGs, physical video, and of course, trying myself to show Jesus to others. Si Lord lang po ang kailangan natin. Just Just The Gospel from John 19, verse 30. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. For the sixth word, let's listen to Father Paulo Asprer. For the sixth word, let's listen to Father Paulo as prayer. When do you say that you have lived a fulfilled life? Isang ganap na buhay, sagana at lubos. Perhaps having a fulfilled or fulfilling life is a combination of many elements. Happiness and freedom, gratitude, acceptance and contentment achievement, productivity and security, or meaning, purpose, significance, legacy, and transcendence. When is our life fulfilled? When can you say that's it? Mission accomplished. Nagawa ko na ang dapat kong gawin. When do you say that you have lived a fulfilled life? Perhaps when you have given birth and reared your children successfully, or when you have received numerous awards or titles, or when you have celebrated your 50th wedding anniversary or reached your senior years. 
or perhaps when you come to peace with the way things are, or when you are able to forgive someone and most of all, forgive yourself. Tetelestai. Jesus' last words are summed up in the Greek word, tetelestai. Naganap na, natupad na, nagwakas na, bayad na, it is paid, it is finished, it is completed, it is consummated, it has been accomplished. Our Lord Jesus had set out to do the will of the Father, to love His own until the end. In His tetelestai, Jesus is both the victim and the great high priest. He makes the ultimate and irreplaceable atonement, consecration, sacrifice, and worship. Akala ng demonyo nagtagumpay siya kay Judas o sa mga taong nagsadlak kay Jesus. Yet suddenly, Perhaps at this moment, when Jesus said, Tetelestai, it dawned on Satan that he had just helped fulfill the will and word of God. He helped bring about the purposes of God. And what was meant to destroy Jesus would now ultimately destroy Satan. It is finished. It is said that God used the same word in history. First, during the completion of creation in the book of Genesis. Second, when all creation would be renewed with God's promise of a new heavens and a new earth in the book of Revelation. And between this beginning and end is Jesus on the cross, crying with mixed emotions in the Gospel of John. Para sa Ebanghelistang si Juan, hudyat ng pagsigaw ng malakas ni Jesus Tetelestai, ang katapusan ng kanyang buhay sa mundo o kamatayan. Gayun din ang katuparan, ang kaganapan ng misyon ng nagliligtas na pag-ibig ng Diyos. Jesus died painfully but lovingly, without regrets. Ngunit si Jesus ay hindi lamang Diyos. Siya rin ay tao katulad natin maliban sa kasalanan. Kaya naman ang tetelestay ni Jesus ay maaaring mga hulugan na una, they are words of accomplishment and triumph. Nagwagi tayo, nagapi ng kabutihan ng kasamaan, natalo ng pag-ibig ang kamatayan at kasalanan, natapos na rin ang paghihirap, takot, kalungkutan, pagdududa at kadiliman na kinaharap ni Jesus sa kanyang puso at sa mundong ginagalawan niya. Second, Jesus' words may sound like words of despair and defeat, but they are not. They are words of deeper surrender and acceptance. Tama na. Pagod na pagod na ako. Game over. Father, please take charge. Hindi ba nakaka-relate rin tayo? We poured our heart and soul into our relationship. We invested our time, talents, and treasures and tears into something, but our dreams and desires have come to naught. Nage-expect ka ng promotion sa opisina pagkatapos ng ilang taong masikap at marangal na paglilingkod, ngunit hindi binigay sa iyo. Buwis buhay mong pinaaral ang iyong mga anak, ngunit nalulong sa bisyo at maagang nagkaanak. Pinatawad mo ang iyong matalik na kaibigan, ngunit nagawa ka pang Lokohin muli. Plinano ninyo ang inyong pinakahihintay na dream wedding. Ngunit dumating ang pandemic at ilang beses na udlot. Lord, tama na. Ikaw na ang bahala. Jesus knows well our pains. Our physical, our emotional pains. Our spiritual woundedness but also the pain of lost opportunities. And the loving Father God has heard the cry of His Son and vindicated Him. Naganap na! Tetelestai! Tapos na nga ba ang ating misyon? Naganap na nga ba ang unatupad ang kaligtasan? The word tetelestai belongs to God and only He 
can use it, but not us. God's work is finished, but ours is not yet. In the venerable words of Archbishop Fulton Sheen, the work of acquiring divine life for man is finished, but not the distribution. God has finished the foundation, and we must build upon it. God has enacted the consecration, but the communion depends on us. And whether our work will ever be finished depends entirely on how we relive Jesus' life and become other Christs. For as long as there is sin in the world, Christ is crucified anew in our hearts. In other words, Jesus is inviting and telling us, My mission has been accomplished. It is in your hands now. Mga kapatid, sa ating pagninilay sa nakabayubay na Jesus sa Cruz, naganap na, natapos na ang kanyang gawaing kaligtasan. Ang ating misyon naman ay ibaba si Jesus sa Cruz. And our mission is not just to take Jesus down from the cross, but also take the other Jesuses down from their crosses, take the nails out of their feet, tulungang makababa sa kanilang mga krus ang iba't ibang Jesus sa ating kapaligiran. Si Jesus na walang makain. Si Jesus na nawalan ng trabaho dahil sa pandemya. Si Jesus na naghihingalo ngayon sa ospital o pinaslang ng walang awa sa kalye. Si Jesus na inaapi, inaabuso at nilalapastangan, hindi pinapansin o winawalang bahala. Si Jesus na nagdadalamhati at nawawalan ng pag-asa. Tetelestai. On the cross, Jesus, faithful to the end, stopped living and began dying. And that was the time that He had reached His deepest center and His life was fulfilled. It is finished. Jesus' salvific work on the cross is finished. When shall we take Him down? When shall we take down the other Jesuses from their crosses. There may be a long delay, detours, and prayers and answer, but God brings about what He set up to accomplish. God finishes what He starts. Our family experienced a lot of trials the past seven years. I lost my job and I had difficult time finding a new one for three to four months. And I had to face a court case filed against our company. It was a grueling three-year court trial. It affects caused my family to have financial crisis to the point of almost giving up our car and our house. In 2018, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was devastated and I found myself in the Garden of Gethsemane, pleading to God. Lord, take this cup away from us. But my wife instead prayed, Thy will be done. If this is my end, I will accept it. I was hoping that God will end our suffering and our trial. I was at a loss, trying to have more faith in God. I was in the brink of breaking. Lord, finish what you have started. Last January 2020, we found out that my wife was carrying our third baby at already 15 weeks. We then realized that she was already pregnant when she had her mastectomy in the des December 2019. In June 2020, our third baby was born. She almost died because the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck three times. We could have lost her if the CS was done an hour late. God blessed us a child with Down syndrome. She was diagnosed with infantile spasm at six months. She experienced seizures several times a day. Then last January 16, she was as well diagnosed with the most serious heart septal defect to affect babies with babies. There is a large hole in the center of her heart that caused the blood to flow between four chambers of her heart 
and her lungs was compensating. She needed an operation immediately. A doctor's word, you are running out of time. We have been asked to prepare at least 800,000 for an operation. How can we raise it quickly? Our savings are depleting. My wife lost her job in October because of the pandemic. The possibility of losing her pregnancy. Without, without surgery, there are risks. The older she gets, the higher the risk of making her inoperable. We found ourselves again in the garden of Gethsemane and prayed, Lord, please heal my daughter without the operation. Yet not our will, but yours be done. Help came. God sent his angels through relatives, friends, and even strangers who gave money gifts to Ellie together with their prayers of healing. And in less than 10 days, we were able to raise the fund needed for an operation. God finished our trials, our sufferings, and our difficulties. I am now gainfully employed. The car and the house is now fully paid. The court case was already dismissed. My wife is now cancer-free, and my daughter is now out of danger and her heart is not functioning. It is finished. Our mission begins. The Gospel from Luke 23, verse 44 to 46. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. 
let's listen to our preacher for the seventh word. Brother Bo Sanchez. Into your hands I commend my spirit. What a powerful prayer. I recommend that you pray that prayer every single day. I'll tell you why. What better place in this entire universe than to be in God's hands? Now, I remember receiving this question, and I, I did not receive this only once or twice, but many times people actually asked me this question. Brother Bo, what does it mean to surrender to God? Before I tell you what surrendering means, surrendering to God means, let me tell you what it is not. Number one, surrendering is not not doing anything, because that was also a question being asked of, to me. And, and, and the question is, Brother Bo, surrendering means, you know, I just pray, 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 and I don't do anything. And I say, no, of course not. In fact, one of the things I've realized when I meet people who are really spiritually mature, walking in with God and surrendering their lives for God, is that their action has become very, very prayerful. Their action has become their prayer. I'm not saying they don't pray. They pray a lot. But it's like it bleeds into every nook and cranny of their schedule. Their life is a prayer. And it is beautiful. And you know, God did not only give you a heart that prays, He gave you hands to work. And that's what you surrender to Him. There's something else that people think surrendering is, which I want to correct. Surrendering is not giving up your individuality, your personality. What do I mean? There are people who, who think that because they're, for example, my mom is very talkative. And, and, and I agree that when you pray, you, you stop talking and you listen more. And, and I totally agree with that, you know. But why did God make my mom talkative? Well, he wanted to use her being talkative. And that's what happened. Um, just a little sharing. Um, we have a movement. It's called The Feast. And it's been going on for 40 years now, going 41, yes, that long. And right now, it is a global movement, and we're in 26 countries. But where did it start? Well, 40 years ago, my mom had this prayer. She said, Lord, do you want us to build a small prayer group in our garage? And you know what? She prayed for that, prayed for that, and it happened. And I'm telling you, the reason why she was able to fill up that garage, 20, 30 people, every Tuesday night for that prayer meeting, because she was talkative. Oh, yes. She, no, no, don't, don't, don't uh, misunderstand me. She's not a preacher, and she cannot preach. You know, she would try. She had this piece of paper with her notes, and there, there was a time when she wanted to give a talk, but, you know, in the first few sentences, she started she started laughing and laughing and laughing and could not laugh and she had to run to the bathroom because she, she wanted to pee. Her, her laughing made her pee. I, I know that's embarrassing, but <laughs> that's my mom. And, and so she cannot preach. But boy, oh boy, put her beside a phone and man, it will be on fire. And she will just be telling story after story about how God blessed her, touched her, spoke to her, and answered her prayer. And she's got this beautiful multitude of stories. And, and she would tell stories about, um, and, and these stories brought a lot of people closer to Jesus. One on one, she would evangelize. She was a great disciple maker. And what am I saying? I'm saying that when you surrender your life to God, when you say, into your hands, I commit my spirit, you know, you give your spirit, but you also give your personality, you give your individuality, and you say, Lord, use me. Why did you make me like this, you know? And um, I'll give you one last example, is that um, I'm, a, I'm a writer. I've written 60 plus books. And all my books are very simple, really. I mean, you could, you could pick a book and, and read it from cover to cover in one sitting. It's so simple. I'm not here to impress people about how intelligent or brilliant I am. I'm just here with a heart that wants to share a message. But let, let me backtrack a bit. That when I was a teenager, um, I, I didn't like to read. My, my grades in school were bad. And so I did not like reading books. But when I was 12 years old and I gave my life to God, it was my mom who gave me a very thin book with large fonts. <laughs> and they were all stories, and they were, they were written very simply. They were stories about God. 
And I, I read it and I, I loved it. I, I was inspired for the first time. I read a book that was not from school, you know, and then, I mean, I did not read textbooks, all right? I did not like reading textbooks, much less any kind of book. I'd rather read cartoons. I watch cartoons on TV, but there I was reading this book. And for the first time, when I closed it, I said, hey, this is good. And then she gave me a second book. It's the life story of St. Francis of Assisi. And I loved it. Again, a lot of stories. And so that, that, that made me kept on reading and reading very simple books. And then I said to myself, when I was 20 years old, I said, I'm going to write a book. And I'm going to be writing to people like me who don't like to read. <laughs> and, and so I, 60 plus books later, I still do that. Um, meaning to say, I don't see myself as a very intelligent person. No, um, I'm simple. I speak simply and I share uh, in a simple way. And look, God has used me into your hands. I commit my spirit and I, I commit to you my weaknesses. I commit to you my preferences. I commit to you who I am and my background, that the fact that I'm, I'm not very intelligent and I, I, I didn't like to read, but now I'm, I'm reading simple stories. And so maybe I'll write, you know, I hope you're getting my drift that you offer to God your background, your personality, your tendencies, your idiosyncrasies. Let God use you in a powerful way. Um, I'm praying for each one of you that you give to God your will, you give to God your mind, you give to God your emotions, you give to God every part of who you are. And then you tell him, I'm going to love you, Lord, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. You will be the reason why I wake up in the morning. You will be, the, you will be my purpose. You will be the fuel in my heart. And I'm going to love you and live for you for the rest of my life. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Many of my huge problems happened in 2008 when I failed in the business as a taxi operator. I was forced to resign from my work as a teacher in the public school to focus full time hoping to revive my business but to no avail. I was buried in debt for more than 4 million pesos. Kaya't nung hindi ko na mabayaran agad ang aking mga pinagkakautangan, nagkaroon ako ng demanda na apat at sa korte ay hinarap ko ang dalawang criminal case at dalawang civil case. I even stopped serving the Lord at the feast. Hindi namin alam kung ano ang aming gagawin. Hindi namin alam kung saan kami pupunta. Ang alam ko lang, kailangan naming mabuhay at kailangan kumain ang pamilya ko. The time I dropped my ego, I went back as a taxi driver because that's the only option to earn and to feed my family. I still remember it was painful in my heart when my kids would ask me for a 5 peso bill to buy pansit canton for their merienda but my pocket was empty. I was almost dying upon receiving death threats from those I owed money and I couldn't pay them as they want. The time the most traumatizing sound was the sound of my cell phone. When it was ringing, I was imagining the monster on the other side of my phone shouting at the top of their voices, Kailan ka magbabayad ang kapal ng mukha mo? I almost have gone crazy every time by just seeing a policeman on the road fearing that they would bring me into prison. We got tired. We wanted to give up. My family, my friends, my human strength, my resources were small compared to the size of our problems that time. In fact, one night, while my wife and me were talking to resolve the problems that we had, we had three options. Number one is to commit suicide. Number two is to escape and go to a very remote area in the province. And number three, to separate our ways. And while thinking that options, we decided to open the Bible and lo and behold, it's from my favorite verse that we have opened, Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. And we prayed hard. We prayed the chaplet of the Divine Mercy that midnight. 
then we learn to surrender to God. We trust Him completely and we agreed to serve Him at all cost and watch His power and wait how God will take His action towards victory. And then we learn to surrender to God. My family and I went back to serve Him again. This time, we serve Him with passion, determination, and commitment. Unafraid to face the pain, rejection, and embarrassment, we started moving on with one reason from our heart, that God is the only reason. Then I went back to Deaf Ed as a teacher in 2014, and by God's grace, moved in to a rent-to-own house and lot in 2015, and in the same year, my kids were transferred back to the private school that they love, and one of them is 100% scholar for four years. God is really good. And I went back serving the Lord at the Feast Bulacan District. That was in 2016. And in 2017, I became the Feast Builder. And God was continuously making His miracles in our lives. I was acquitted. All cases filed against me in 2017. 18. God made me finish this journey strong. It's because of Him. It's because of His power. It's because of His hands. Now, I understood the meaning of surrendering to God. Like you and me, brothers and sisters, sometimes we thought we're a victim, where in fact we are victorious for God is with us. Tama ang itinuro ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Malaya nang sumusunod kay Kristo Na kaya nang talikuran ang tukso Pagkat siya na ang buhay ko Ang sabi nila Ako'y larawan ng ligaya't saya Mapalad kailan may di mag-isa Dahil Jesus kasama ka Ako ang nagwagi Kailan may di na maripang masawi Maling landas di tatahaging muli Buhay ko'y hawak niya bawat sandali Ako ang nagwagi Ang kasalanan ko'y kaniyang pinawi Ako ay pinatawad na Kay ganda ng gawad niya Mayroong Jesus, buktong anak ng Diyos. Dugo niya ang sa krus, iibinuhos. Upang mundo ay matubos. Ako ang nagwagi, kailan may di? Maling landas di tatahaking muli Buhay ko'y hawak niya bawat sandali Ako ang nagwagi Ang kasalanan ko'y kaniyang pinawi Ako ay 
Maraming salamat mga kapatid for joining us. Lent may seem quite different this year due to the lockdown in many areas, but the essence remains the same. May we be focused on what's ultimately important in the way we live our lives, as spoken by a man dying on the cross to bring us salvation. May we continue to open our hearts and seek the Lord's grace as we continue to contemplate the passion of Christ and joyfully anticipate this Easter celebration. God bless us all.